first and foremost, thank you guys for having me. I want to thank uh, Frager and the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin for having me come up here and tell you guys about my concussion experience and what I've learned uh, about the world of concussions over the last couple of years. Uh, so let me tell you briefly how I got involved in this project. Um, like you said, I've been doing a lot of film-related activities since my retirement from uh, producing, writing, uh, to acting, uh, executive producer, you name it, I've been doing all kinds of things. Actually, I was invited to come speak here last year, but I had an opportunity to go to uh, England and film a movie called Gridiron UK about American football in England. Sure. Hopefully, God, hopefully it comes out sometime this year. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, two years ago, a buddy of mine knew I was doing some film stuff, and he said we should do a documentary. I was like, oh, all right, sounds like a plan. He's like, uh, concussions and hockey are a pretty big issue. And I think we should do one on that. And I said, well, I don't know anything about hockey. Um, I don't like the cold weather, as many of you probably know. So I don't have to stay away from ice, period. I don't like ice in my drinks. I just don't like cold and stuff. So long story short, I said, why don't we do some research on football and find out what's going on. So, Started doing some research on concussions and traumatic brain injury, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, to find out what was going on with this concussion issue. Uh, I saw just recently that the Center for Disease Control just uh, labeled uh, our situation with concussions as epidemic. So it's pretty serious. So I'm doing this research. Uh, matter of fact, Dr. Augustus, who was, who was gone, who was here earlier, uh, head trainer at the University of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, was one of the first doctors I interviewed. While I'm interviewing him, uh, he said one of the most popular misconceptions is that you have to be unconscious or kind of punch drunk to have a concussion. And that was my understanding of concussion growing up. Unless you were on the ground sleeping, and that's happened. Uh, one of my teammates, you guys know Antonio Freeman, he got knocked unconscious a couple times in some games. And I was the first guy to him, and he was literally snoring on the field. I, you know, for us, we, you know, we're, we're joking. We don't know how serious this is. First thing we say is, hey, dude, no sleeping on the job. We got a game to play. Wake up and let's get back to work. Um, so, Dr. Gustafson says that every time you reach your bell rung, that's an actual concussion. Every time your brain touches your skull, it causes some bruising, and that's an actual concussion. I was never worried about my mental health until that moment because. We get our bell rungs all the time as football players. All the time. Hundreds, maybe even thousands of times. I can't even. And I played running back. I know, you know when I played fullback, it was worse. But the offensive line, the defensive line, linebackers, those are the guys that were me. Those are the guys that I've had conversations with who were really struggling. You know, I, I've never had a documented concussion in the NFL. Like I said, I got my bell rung hundreds of times, maybe thousands of times. I don't know. Because you lose track because you don't think about it. That was part of the game growing up. You get your bell rung, you shake it off, you get back in the game, and that's it. You know, so I'm not sure exactly how many times um, I got my bell rung, but that's when I got really scared. I mean, like, really scared because it happened so much to everybody. I know William Henderson, who was here last year, who was my fullback. I don't know how many times he would come back to the huddle and he's got this look in his eye, and he's like, and he's blinking. And he's trying to get it together. And it's like, come on, big fella, focus. I need you. And about once every other game, William would go the wrong way on the lead play. And the lead play is just pull back one way, tail back behind. You go to sleep. He's leading you through the hole. And William would go the wrong way. And it's not rocket science. 93 was to the left. Odd numbers to the left. 92. Even numbers are to the right. And Brett would always say, he would always know. No, when William went the wrong way, you can see people looking in my eyes and see the panic when I'm getting pulled back. Because my pullback is not where it's supposed to be. So, um, you know, William, great fullback. He, he's having some, some, some post concussion issues. Uh, but, like I said, getting back to the story, uh, I became work. You know, I started interviewing guys for my documentary, Bell Run. And the stuff that I found was, was alarming and nerve-wracking. You know, there are guys in their as early as their mid-20s who already got early onset Alzheimer's and dementia. And guys who are, who are suicidal. I had a guy in his mid-20s, never played one down in the NFL. Saw an, uh, an interview, an article or something I did, 
did about this topic. And I used to train with him. And he said, man, listen, he said, my head hurts all the time. All the time. I can't eat, I can't think, I can't sleep. And I can't afford help. And if I can't get help, I'm going to take care of you. And I think we know what that means. That's when I became, you know, the, the concussion guy, so to speak. You know, it was never, never my intention to be at the forefront of this pop. It really never was. You know, I wanted to be a filmmaker. You know, we could have did a, a film on, on riding bikes at Packer practice, but we chose concussions. And this is where I am today. Um, not only at the pro level, but for kids. My documentary, Bell Run, um, which you guys can support on IndieGoGo.com, go in the search and type in Bell Run. It's a crowdfunding project. Uh, but in doing this documentary, and I, I, I've, uh, we premiered it in New York, Boston, and Atlanta. And the biggest thing I got was from parents not knowing how serious it was, especially for kids. And I'm sure the doctors can elaborate more on this, but there's something called second impact syndrome, where your brain, or kid's brain, is not fully developed. They get the first concussion. And they return to action before that concussion has time, has had time to heal. If they get that second concussion, it can be fatal. And if it's not fatal, kids come back and it's like they're about three or four steps behind where they used to be. They're a little slower. And they never recover from that. Ever. The parents are like, why don't I know this? I'm like, don't get mad at me, I just found out. I'm trying to let you know. <laughs> I'm here to share with you to help you understand the problems we face. Um, so long story short, uh, you know, it's not just an NFL problem. It starts at the Little League level. Obviously, everywhere in between, people are suffering. And we're just not finding out how serious it is. Um, and it, it's, it's quite manageable with treatment. Just watch it pass off the freight. Because it can be helped. Guys don't have to be desperate or, or feel hopeless that their lives are over, that they can't remember anything. Um, you know, they're moody, they're arable, those kinds of things. So that's all I'm afraid of what you guys are doing. But there's a lot of information out there, a lot of information you guys are going to get today that, that people need to know about. Because we didn't know when I played that there was a chance that I wouldn't be able to remember, remember playing in my mid-40s. We just didn't know that. You know, my knees are bad, my ankles are bad, there's certain things I can't do fine, I'm not going to play. I signed up for that. But I didn't sign up or was any mental, uh, mental issues moving forward. You know, we thought, as players, as football players, I'm sure we ask football players here, that the helmet was there to protect you. You know, that's what we thought. It doesn't protect as well as we had anticipated. And I know people get upset and like, oh, you're going to ruin the game of football? First of all, I'm not going to ruin the game of football. I don't think I can do that by myself, personally. I just don't think I have that ability to ruin the game. But it needs to change. You know, the reason why the NFL guys stopped wearing leather helmets back in the day is because there was an epidemic of fractured skulls. And somebody said, that's not a good idea, we need something better. And NASCAR, when Dale Earnhardt Sr. was killed, there was a ton of changes of safety changes that made NASCAR safe for everybody involved. That's what I'm trying to do with football at every level. You know, outside of treatment that you can get for a traumatic brain injury, how about trying to prevent getting better equipment, better helmets? And, and people are making an effort to do that. But also, to let the football players know that it's not about trying to hurt the other guy. You know, I've always said at some point in time as football players, we have to take the responsibility that we're not going to try to kill each other. You know, because it is a gladiator sport, and it is an ego-driven sport. And the more you can impose your will physically on somebody, the easier it is it's going to be for you to win a football game. But I tell guys, you know, when that receiver is coming across the middle and he's going to protect you, and you got that, that, that shot to clean him up, think about his future. Think about your future. Do you really want to go through some of the things that guys are going through? I've had conversations with probably four or five guys. I had one last week, one of my college students, who said he was just recently diagnosed with traumatic brain injury. And he cried on the phone twice. I've been on conversations where I've talked to grown men 
and they just start crying because it's bad. It's really bad, and it's scary. You know, not only for those guys, but for their families, their children, you know, their friends. Because nobody knows. You know, in worst case scenarios, we, we read about the suicides. You know, that's not what we want. We want guys to get help. We want guys to know what they're facing. And it all starts from understanding exactly what's at stake. All right, so now I'm going to turn it over uh, and let the real experts tell you more about concussions. But that's my story I want to share with you guys. Hopefully, I've enlightened some people. Hopefully, do some more research uh, about traumatic brain injury, about chronic traumatic encephalopathy, so no one has to deal with the issues that some of these uh, former players are dealing with. Thank you.